let's get into this work. I submit to you that cherubims are not angels. Amen. Cherubims are not angels. Never have been, never will be. You've been heard, well, there's archangels and there's seraphim, cherubim, and there's and, and principalities, thrones, and powers, and all these are different orders of angels. That is a lie. Cherubim and Revelation are Revelation 4 and Revelation 5 and the throne room Revelation are beast, the four living creatures. The Greek word there is zoe, Z-O-E. They have the face of a lion, man, calf, and an eagle. What's a calf? It's a baby ox. Amen. It's a man child that's growing into a man. In Ezekiel 1, in the 30th year of Ezekiel, son of Buzi, he saw visions of God. Why was it the 30th year of Ezekiel? Because the high priest took his office at what? At age 30. Therefore, Jesus is the apostle and high priest, the profession of our faith. When could he take his ministry as our high priest? Could Jesus work a miracle until age 30? Well, he's God. He's God. He's God. He's God. He's God. But he didn't have flesh at that moment, so can't All right, now we're getting it. Philippians 2, verse 5 through 10. Jesus, who being in the form of God. What's the form of God? Spirit. Who was there in the form of God? Jesus. Why didn't he reveal his name? Moses asked him, what is your name? And whenever they, they ask me your name, I'll be able to tell them what it is. He said, I am that I am. Amen. Has sent me. Not I am who I am. I am that I am. Why? Because this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. The Lord is that spirit. Amen. Amen. Watch that, that. <laughs> we don't carry no ESVs, NKGVs, uh, NKGs, or NASBs. We carry the authorized version, KJV, before 25, because they changed the KJV even before then. And that's blood. Amen. It'll mess you up on Revelation. Well, what about old Jacob over there? No man has seen God at any time. Then who did Jacob see? No man has seen God any time. The only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. Then who did Jacob see? Huh? He saw a manifestation. What's that, epiphany, a theophany? What? That's no biblical term, is it? Theophany. I don't see theophany in the word of God, do you? Oh, this is an epiphany. Where do you see that in the word of God? I don't see that in the word of God. God's a person. I don't see that. I see God's a spirit. We start putting all this stuff in the word of God and ain't no more there than a man in the moon. Amen. Then who did Jacob see? If no man has seen God at any time, what did Jacob see? Jacob wrestled with an angel. And that angel, whenever he said, what is your name? And then he said, then he said, didn't give him his name. He said, but thou, Jacob, now you will be called Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God. Power with God? Then say you are the power of God. You got power with God. Amen. Israel. Well, somebody said, that's that natural Jew over there. He's not a Jew that is one outwardly in the circumcision of flesh, but he is a Jew that is one inwardly. Amen. In the circumcision of the heart and that in the spirit, whose praise is not of God but of man. That's Romans 2, 28 and 29. Why were you baptized? Somebody said, baptism ain't got nothing to do with salvation. Oh, really? Then why did in Mark 16, Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Well, that's just the second verse of grace, Brother Beard. Who said? Hey, you know what the church preaches? He that is saved, he that believeth and is saved shall be baptized. But Jesus preached, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, Mark 16. 
Once they go in all the world, teaching them to observe all things which are commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Name singular. What is the name of the Father? Where do you get it? John 17, I'm coming in my Father's name. John 5, I'm coming in my Father's name. John 17, Father, I have manifested thy name. Well, if he is the Father, why is he praying to the Father? Because he's in the flesh. Explain it. Why is he, why is he praying to the Father? That's another person. You don't pray to yourself. Wasn't glorified yet? What's glory got to do with it? Give me the scripture. Where? Philippians 2 what? Quote it. Give it to me. Who? Jesus. Who being in the form of God, spirit, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Who's equal with God? Nobody but God himself. Every office of the spirit is equal with God. The Father. See, there's a mystery of God and the Father of Christ. Colossians 2, in the full acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Other preacher said, I can't talk to you because all you do is quote, quote scriptures. Well, what else are we supposed to quote? Amen. No, really. I'm sick of hearing what you think and what you believe. Who cares what you think and what you believe? Well, I believe this. I don't care what you believe. That's what thus saith the Lord. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Well, in whom are hidden all treasure of wisdom. Now, there's a mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. What's that mystery of Christ? That's what we're going to get tonight. We're going to see who that him is. Who's he writing it to? The revelation of Jesus Christ as he gave unto him and signified by his angel to his servant John. Well, servant John, John the beloved disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Well, I thought God didn't have no respect to a person, and there he is, he loved John. And there's a reason why. There is a reason why, isn't it? Let me ask you something. Why is it over here in Revelation 10 that he tells John, take the book out of him, go take that book of the angel of him, and eat you all of it. It says the little book, not the, not the Biblion, not the word of God you hold, but the Bibliaridion, the little book. It's only mentioned four times the word of God, Bibliaridion. That's a Biblion. But this is a Bibliaridion. What has God done with the little book? He's compressed it. Why? So you can eat the gospel. And you can eat all of it. How much of the word of God are you going to know? How much truth are you going to have? Some? The Holy Ghost leads you and guide you into some truth? When does he receive the truth? Right there in Revelation 10. Who is John? The disciple whom Jesus loved. Why? Why is it John? Because it went from 12, then it went down to 3, Peter, James, and John on the inner circle, and then it went down to 1. In, Pentecost, in, in Passover, there was 12, 12 disciples. Then, in the book of Acts, it went down to uh, Pentecost, it went down to three. Then, in Tabernacles, it goes down to one. Don't you know that all runneth, runneth in a race and only one winneth a prize? Gathering all things together in one in Christ. That I, the fathers, I'm in you and you and me, let them be made perfect in one. Amen. One, one, one. Amen. And who is that disciple? Why would you call him John? And he tells John again, he took the book out of the hand and said, it'll be sweet to your mouth and bitter to your stomach. I ate all of it. It was sweet to my mouth and bitter to my stomach. And the Lord said unto him, thou must again preach before many kindreds, nations, tongues, and kings. John's going to preach again. Is he going to resurrect from the dead and preach again? 
Or is this the Bibliaridian that the beloved disciple, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved with Jesus ahead and you, the body of the Christ, making but one man will preach this everlasting gospel to all the world, and the disciple that Jesus loved, and that's the reason he said that Son of Man was his favorite, uh, his favorite uh, expression of himself. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Then he was speaking in the third person. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. His name said, shall I find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? Who's the he? Amen. Who's the him there? It's the word of God unto Jesus. But Jesus where? The Jesus Christ that's come in the flesh. Amen. Let me ask you this. Do you believe in 1 John 4, verse 1 through 3? Hereby try you the spirits to see whether they are of God, for there are many false prophets that are entered into the world. Any spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Question, is that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? That's it. Take a good look at it. 1 John 4, verse 1 through 3. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh or has come in the flesh. The church preaches it has come in the flesh and he's it and there's no more. All you're doing is waiting on your pew, waiting for Jesus to split the eastern sky and then you're going to be caught up in the sweet by and by and you're going to know all these things then better in the sweet by and by. Really? Am I being too hard? I'm slapping you around with velvet gloves. Why? Because you have to understand what your call is. Not my call, yours. Somebody said, I'm not called. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Now, I can't say the foot I have no need. He got to put the more abundant of on the less comely parts. There'd be no chisholm in the body. What God's called you for, nobody else can do your call but you. Amen. He told Johnny, you go down and prophesy against Nineveh. Well, he ran, jumped on the ships of Charleston, ran, 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 ran. Then you know what happened? Went into the belly of the whale and gave, in hell I lifted up my eyes and prayed and he vomited him out on the shore. Did God go get another person to go and Jonah instead? Or did the word of the Lord again come unto Jonah? In other words, if you're, if you're tired of me whipping you, boy, are you ready to obey me now? And you can tell your 25 year old son that that's exactly what's going on. He better wake up and smell a coffee. Huh? You had a lot of prayers went over there from there, from that generation to you, and into that you've never answered your call. Now it's on your son too. You think God plays? My son's got a one-inch rod from his knee to his foot because he didn't obey God in getting ready on that call. You know what he told me? I don't want it. Dad, I'll go on on your coattails. You ain't going on my coattails. And when he starts reading the word, and the prophets came in two months, God will turn that steel metal rod into bone Amen. and heal him. He's been, risen, he's been rose from the dead before. Yeah. Dead for four hours and God rose him from the dead. Amen. Somebody said, we didn't raise mine. You better thank God he didn't. God knows what he's doing. Amen. But you judge God. When you're mad at God, God, you shouldn't have done this and you shouldn't have done that. They live for you. They did this, this and that and the other. God's the one who makes these calls. And you sit there and judge God. Oh, yes, you do. And you will never blame yourself. You'll blame somebody else but. And it'll always end up with passing a buck on God. It, God, it's your fault. Right. Little Gus, blame God because his mama died and became an atheist until the word of the Lord came to him, knocked him to his knees and got down and wallowed on the floor in tears. Now he's our drummer. Yes. 
You ever going to be used of God? You have to understand, no matter what, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, and blessed be the name of the Lord. If you don't understand that, you'll never be used of God. You'll be in torment all your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm off on that, but I bless God that's for somebody here. Amen. Cherubim, where are we going? What's this revelation given to? Is there a higher glory for the church of the living God now? Or are we going to get this in sweet by and by all of a sudden? As soon as you die, boom. Let me tell you something. Where are you? Where the tree falleth, there shall it lie. That means the same revelation you've got of Jesus, the same glory you've got here is the same glory you're going to do eternity with. And there's different levels in glory and there's different degrees of hell. Yes. So you better get all you can and can all you get because you're going to need every bit of it to make it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I don't think we ought to wear this and the women shouldn't do this and the men shouldn't do that. Honey, get in a word and forget about what everybody else looks like. Amen. I heard one preacher say, ain't going to be no fat people in heaven. Well, sonny, I'm going to be there, and I ain't going to go on no diet for you. <laughs> Bless God. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm on a weight watchers. Yeah, I put this weight on. It took me uh, 66 years to get it on there, and I'm going to keep it on. <laughs> Bless God. Amen. You're going to put me in hell because of you. You think you're some fasting man of God? You don't even know who Jesus is. That makes me sick. Everybody judges around the outward appearance. You better wake up and smell a coffee. You better start walking in some love. Amen. The only way you're going to fulfill the law of Christ is bear one another's burdens. Amen. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Well, I don't want to bear anybody else's burden. And you're in the wrong church. You're in the wrong body of Christ, son, because that's the only way you're going to do it. <laughs> Somebody said, am I my brother's keeper? You better be not only your brother, but your sister's keeper as well. <laughs> what is it, Brother Don? Why didn't he reveal his name over there? There's old, there's uh, uh, Genesis over there. He's, he's uh, wrestling with the angel of God. And he said, I, thou shalt no more call Jacob, but thou shalt be called Israel. He called the name of the place Peniel, the face pay -e of El, God, the face of God. Was he mistaken? The face of God. But somebody said, well, that angel wasn't a redeeming angel. Oh, yes, it was. Genesis 48 calls it the redeeming angel, capital R, and a capital A redeeming angel. Genesis 48. Then who was that? That was Jesus. Well, no man's seen God at any time. Why? He's the invisible God, the manifestation, the revealing Amen. has always been in the Son. Any revelation that you have and you've seen is in the Son. Amen. That's a manifestation office of the Spirit because no man has seen God at any time. Amen. Not Moses. Well, he saw the hind parts. Yeah, did he see the Father flying by? Saw his hind parts? Did uh, Jacob see Peniel, face of God? Manoah, Samson's daddy, said, you're going to have a son. No razor is going to come up on his head, and he'll drink no wine because he'll have the bow of a Nazarite. Jesus didn't have a Nazarite bow, folks. He wasn't long-haired either. He didn't have no bow of a Nazarite. He came eating and drinking wine. He said, behold, a gluttonous and a wine bibber. He pulled his hair. They couldn't even tell the difference between him and a Roman soldiers out there. Couldn't tell the difference. He didn't have long hair. That's Michelangelo. He did not have a Nazarite vow. Just because he's of Nazareth doesn't mean he had a Nazarite vow. Jesus drank wine. Amen. But not this 14 proof you buy down here at the honky tonk. Get that straight right away. I've argued with my dad long enough over that. Oh, Lord Jesus. Well, who did they see? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Gavetti go, well, seven times hotter. They threw him in that old burning fire furnace. The old king said, did we not throw three in? And there's a fourth one, one likened to the Son of God. 
Was the son already there? Was that the second person of the Godhead? Was he already there? Did he, was he born in flesh and blood yet? Then who was it? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If God wanted to right now, could he come out here and, and show himself as a traffic light right out there? And stop you right up down the road and you saw a red light and you stopped to look around and ain't there no more. Could he do that? Could Jesus on the road to Emmaus just change forms and all of a sudden, boop, vanish? Can he do that? He couldn't, he can't lie. You got somebody that said, God can do anything. No, he can't. God cannot lie. I can lie like a dog. But God can't defies his own holiness. Question. Who did Manoah see? He said, look, tell his wife. Tell him to come back. Tell the angel to come back again. Because I want to see him. She prayed, Lord, let him come back again. He come back there. He said to Manoah, Samson's daddy, look, your wife's going to have a son. Let no razor come upon his head. Drink no wine. For he'll be a judge over Israel and have a Nazarite vow. As he said, what is your name that when this cometh to pass, we can give you honor? Why do you ask me my name, seeing it is secret? Why is it secreted? Zephaniah, God has secreted. Why? Because, God, let me ask you this question. Would you get a rental house, rent a rental house, and redo it all, pour concrete and put your name in the concrete, put you a marble slab over the front door with your name over it on a rental house? Because you know you're going to move somewhere else. Well, God was just a passing through. He did not take on him the nature of angels. Well, somebody said to his angel, the P-A-W. I know G.T. Haywood called him the Mamra, the uncreated angel. He's not an angel, never has been an angel, and never will be an angel. Amen. He showed himself as an angel, but he was not there. That was not a permanent abode. He was in the burning bush, but that was not his permanent abode. That was not his permanent revealing. That was not his permanent manifestation. That was not his permanent house. That was not his permanent tabernacle. But there was going to be a day that he was going to put a permanent house, a permanent abode, and never ever to leave out again for every eternal world without it. And when he did, he was going to place his eternal name there. Amen. A name that will be above every name. That if you want to find him and you want to see him, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The Father of glory revealed in a body of flesh and blood. But God had a law. God uh, literally created Adam in, the, in uh, the image and likeness of God and told him uh, to subdue the earth and replenish it, repopulate it. Why? Because there's another creation before that. <laughs> to repopulate it. This earth is billions of years old. Not just 6,000 years. It's 6,000 since he created Adam and this, this go around here. What is man that thou, Hebrews 2, what is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou regardest him, thou madest him a little lower than the angels, crowned him with glory and honor, set him over the work of thine hands. Set him over the work of thine hands. That's right, Adam. So when Adam fell, but, but now we see not all things under him. Why? But we see Jesus. Amen. That's going to restore all things. That's Hebrews 2. So when Adam fell, all creation fell with him. Now, the earnest expectation of the creatures, creature, the earnest expectation of the creature. Let me get my tongue hung around my eye tooth. I can't see what I'm saying. The earnest expectation of the creature moaneth and groaneth in pain to be delivered into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. And not only they, but we also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, who groan without ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wet the redemption of our bodies. So when Adam fell, all creation fell too, didn't it? Amen. And now 
It brought forth death for in Adam all die. By one, here's Romans 5, by one man's disobedience, sin came to the world and death by sin. Death reigns, uh, how sin reigns by death. Well, sin is there. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam, of the like figure of him that was to come. Romans 5. Oh, but then he gave a law to Moses. Why? The law was given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. Not just sin, but exceedingly sinful. That mankind would know he's in sin. Exceedingly sinful. The law, by the works of the law, no flesh should be saved. Why? Because Romans 8, 3 says, in what the law could not do, in that it was weak in the flesh, not in the spirit, in the flesh, because that law is holy, it's good. But then the flesh, the flesh can't keep it. So what the law could not do, in that it was weak in the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, not sinless flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. Well, wait a minute. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world and death by sin. Even so, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. As the offense is of one, so also is the free gift of one. A man lost it, only a man can redeem us back. Amen. God is spirit. He has no blood. He can't die and he can't be tempted. The devil thinks I've won this. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> what was that now? Wrong. That's right. Well, how's God going to do it? Well, snake, servant, I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. It's going to bruise your head and I'm going to bruise his heel. Not the woman's heel, his heel. Because this is going to be a seed of the woman. That seed is Christ. Not seeds as of many, but that seed which is one. Genesis 3.15, as soon as they sinned, God had made a provision in the first proto-evangel, the first messianic, messianic promise in Genesis 3.15. Messiah is the Greek word uh, 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 Christos, which is a Hebrew word, Hamashiach, which is the same in the English as Christ. Amen. So Hamashiach is Hebrew for Messiah, English, or the Greek Christos, which is Christ, and it's all one and the same Jesus. Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Not a different. The Jews think that their Messiah, the man who is God, will restore the kingdom again to Israel. Therefore, Jesus is not that Messiah because when their Messiah comes, they'll put Israel over all the nations. What they don't realize that Hamashiach ben Yosef, the suffering Messiah, has already come. They're looking for Hamashiach ben David, the one that'll never die. They missed his first coming. Well, what does God do? How's he going to do it? Brother Don said, Philippians 2, verse 5 through 10, Jesus being in the form of God. What's the form of God? Spirit. Made himself, Philippians 2, 6. God made himself, what? No, no, no reputation. No reputation. Here's the glory of God. He takes the glory off. Did he make himself of no deity? Being in the form of God made himself of no deity. No reputation. What's reputation? That's your repute. That's your glory. That's your dignity. That's your honor. No reputation. It's a Greek word, K-E-N-O, long O. Let me put the Greek word up here. 